you join me today down a bit of a Cuban number station slash signals intelligence rabbit hole. I have no idea where this is going, so let's see if we can make some sense of things. We're in Bayucal, a small town located in the province of Havana that played a significant role during the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. Just outside this Cuban town is a facility that the US government suspects has for a long time been an intelligence gathering station. Recent news stories from this summer have revealed that the town that once hid Soviet nuclear warheads is now home to large parabolic antennas that are partially obscured by vegetation. A sign nearby warns people, keep out, military zone. The United States believes that the base is used to intercept their radio communications according to a Federal Communications Commission document from November 2022. The Wall Street Journal recently cited unnamed American officials in a report that Washington was worried that China was working towards setting up a spy base in Cuba to better eavesdrop on the US. The US believed that China conducted an upgrade of its intelligence collection facilities in Cuba in 2019, but the Chinese government said that assertions about a Chinese spy base in Cuba are completely false. So let's go back in time. During the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, Bayoukal gained notoriety. The crisis was a tense standoff between the United States and the Soviet Union, sparked by the discovery by US spy planes of Soviet missile installations in Cuba. Bayoukal, being in close proximity to these missile sites, became a crucial location for both sides during the crisis. The town was home to a medium-range ballistic missile site housing R-12 missiles with a range of approximately 1,100 nautical miles. These missiles were capable of carrying nuclear warheads, making them a significant threat to the United States. As tensions escalated, Bayoukal became a potential target for US military action. The proximity of the missile site to the town meant that any strike on the installation could have resulted in collateral damage to the surrounding area. The US military carefully considered the potential consequences of targeting Bayoukal during their planning. Eventually, the US agreed to remove its missiles from Turkey and the Soviet Union agreed to dismantle its missile sites in Cuba, including the one in Bayoukal. Today, the former missile site has been completely demolished, with some civilian dwellings taking its place. Half a mile to the south is the former Soviet military headquarters, which is even closer to the village of Bayoukal. This site has been mostly demolished, but is accessible to urban explorers and basically anyone. Moving just under a mile to the east, we come to the intelligence base that's been causing all of this fuss. To the south of the facility, we can see no less than 11 satellite communications dishes, with another building over to the east. Moving north, we can see some more buildings which look like the main headquarters, and there's also some other satellite dishes. To the west appears to be the main entrance, with a whole host of other buildings. And then we come to the main event. Firstly is what appears to be a Wollenweber type circularly disposed antenna array, a system designed to pinpoint radio signals with an extremely high degree of accuracy in real time. There's also this arrangement of vertical poles, which seems to be some sort of HF interferometer, used for the same reason. 
just next door is a ray dome that was constructed between March 2017 and February 2018, but Google Earth imagery shows a plan was in place earlier on. Similar antennas have been employed for signals interception, missile tracking, satellite uplinks and downlinks, tracking of objects in space and in some cases to disrupt satellite communications. The ray dome, approximately 6 to 7 metres in diameter, sits on top of a square building, approximately 11 to 12 metres wide. Today, not long after its installation, it appears to be dishevelled, however this all helps to camouflage it into the surrounding area. If you're still with me, you're probably wondering where I'm going with all of this. Well, I'm trying to get to the bottom of where the Cuban HMO1 signal is actually coming from. I made a video on HMO1 recently, which I'll link below and at the end, but it's basically Cuba's number station for communicating with spies and agents in foreign lands. It sends numbers and data packets numerous times daily, and has done for over 10 years in its current guise. Again, there's tons of information in the video below. It's believed that HMO1 shares its transmission centres with the Cuban international broadcaster Radio Havana Cuba. It's not uncommon for Radio Havana Cuba to be unintentionally broadcast on HMO1's frequencies and vice versa, but is this location theory actually true? Wouldn't it be safer and more secure to transmit these secret messages from the intelligence base we covered earlier? On the one hand, HMO1 is a pretty unprofessional setup, often making mistakes, broadcasting music, sound effects and even the soundtracks to adult movies. Or could all of this be deliberate? Before we go any further, Radio Havana Cuba is believed to emanate from this location, just over 5.5 miles southeast of Bayucal. Here we can see 13 HF towers of varying sizes, but not much in the way of buildings for things like transmitters and power. 2006 saw the number 2 transmitter for Radio Havana Cuba built at Bayucal, but I'm not convinced that this is the right place. Other sources claim that this is the source of the transmissions from Radio Havana Cuba, a location a further two and a half miles southeast, but a trawl through Google Earth history makes it clear that this can't be the case, or at least not in recent years. Perhaps the original site was here, before moving here. If HMO1 is as poorly run as it would seem from the outside, then maybe it does come from the Radio Havana Cuba site. However, if these mistakes are actually intentional, and it's a well thought out, professionally run spy station, it would make sense that it comes from the intelligence station near Bayucal. 
I'm quite far down this rabbit hole of research, but like all of these things, we only know what's out there publicly, things you can easily find on the internet. I've just thrown together what we already know to pose some questions to you. Where do you think that Radio Havana Cuba is transmitting from? Where do you think HMO1 is transmitting from? The intelligence station? The alleged Radio Havana Cuba site? Or somewhere else? Let me know in the comments below. Ocho, ocho, tres, uno, cinco, cero, cuatro, ocho.